explosion within the past couple of years where like 15 people, workers died. So, uh, and uh, I'm not sure, I'm, I don't know uh, for sure if uh, BP still owned, uh, you know, because British Petroleum, I don't know if it's still owned by the uh, British Royalty. Um, someone knows that, just leave a comment and let me know. But, uh, so yeah, I don't really empathize with BP and the fact that Halliburton's down there and the fact that the military's down there um, because they called for it. It was, oh, we need to get the military down there to help. And it's like, okay, yeah. yeah well, I guess when we, when, when you live in Nazi or in the Fourth Reich, whatever, it's, uh, it's standard operating procedure. Send the fucking troops, uh, National Guard, uh, you know, if... It gets above 80 degrees, right? I mean, just any old reason. You get a little more, a little. If you get snow in Kentucky or in the, or in the Midwest, oh my God, call out the National Guard. So that's just normal. That's just normal now to call the National Guard out for anything, and that's just to condition the public, of course. But yeah, when you see the troops, the National Guard, Halliburton corporations, and uh, 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 law enforcement, mil whatever military, and then BP, and then oh, and let's not forget private contractors private security contractors, um, that's not good. That's not a good sign with a totally clean beach. That's not a good sign. So uh, let's hope that it the, that these death winds uh, don't uh, kick up. But I'm going to cover, I'm going to let you listen to this little uh, news segment here on uh, Channel 4 uh, local affiliates. So here, uh, just, I guess, just check this out. In Louisiana, seven fishermen involved in the cleanup of the BP oil spill were hospitalized on Wednesday after reporting nausea, dizziness, headaches, and chest pains. The crew members were working aboard three separate vessels. The fishermen were likely exposed to both leaked oil and chemical dispersants. As a precautionary measure, the Unified Command has ordered all 125 commercial ships helping with the cleanup in Breton Sound, Louisiana, to return to land. For weeks, cleanup crews hired by BP have been reporting health issues, but their complaints have largely been ignored. As recently as Tuesday, BP spokesperson Graham McEwen told the Los Angeles Times he was unaware of any health complaints among cleanup workers. BP has refused to provide respirators to many hired fishermen, and the company has reportedly threatened to fire workers who use their own respirators on the job. We're joined now in New Orleans by Clint Guidry, president of the Louisiana Shrimp Association. He's a third-generation shrimp fisherman. This is Democracy Now! We welcome you to the studios of Democracy Now!, though we're speaking to you in New Orleans. Tell us what's happening, Clint. Well, good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is a situation that has been ongoing for several weeks now. Uh, having had prior training and experience working with uh, uh, oil and the, the chemicals uh, in oil and their dangers, several of the fishermen out on the uh, work site, they were complaining of burning eyes and, 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 and strong smells, and my experience Tell, told me that they were getting exposed to dangerous chemicals. Uh, the benzenes, all the light ends off the crude, and this uh, corrects it. It's a new experience for me. I have been doing some research. Uh, it contains a substance called 2-butoxyethanol, uh, up to 60% by volume, uh, which is a very, very dangerous chemical. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but just doing the research, and I knew that they were spraying this chemical in the same area where my fishermen were working. And I have brought this to light. I have tried to make public, uh, as a matter of fact, just uh, uh, a couple of days ago, three days ago, I met with the Washington delegation in Galliano and expressed my concerns that this was happening. Now, uh, Clint Kidry, what about this uh, OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration? Aren't they supposed to be monitoring uh, work sites that involve uh, U.S. companies, even if they're offshore? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but I'm understanding it's MMS and, and, and U.S. Coast Guard in this situation. What about respirators? Are people wearing respirators? No, ma'am. Uh, I... I Having had prior experience, I know these people, their friends, their family. I uh, bought respirators and I brought them down 
to these people, and when they tried to wear them, the BP representatives was on site, uh, uh, told them that it wasn't a dangerous situation, and they didn't need to wear them, and if they did, uh, they would be taken off the job. If they now, wore respirators, they'd be taken off the job? Yes. Why? Because BP lies, and BP protects BP, and that is the biggest problem we're having in South Louisiana right now is BP with its big all big money is is buying up all the cover and when I say cover I mean camouflage that they can to try to make little of the situation not only uh, environmentally but health wise this is ridiculous but how does wearing respirators threaten BP how do the workers, the cleanup crews wearing respirators, how does that threaten BP? And so there you go, folks. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at uh, this article here. And, you know, this is from the Institute for Southern Studies. Um, and this is a chart based on Louisiana's Environmental Action Network's analysis of the EPA's data. But, uh, you know, if you don't know what it is, it's basically uh, for hydrogen sulfide you know, just zero to 10 parts per million, it's irritation of the eyes, nose, and throat. But the levels that they're detecting are anywhere from 50 to 1,100. And this chart that I'm looking at goes from zero to 10 for low, 10 to 50 parts per million for moderate, and for high, 50 to 200. And they're reporting 1,000. And so the uh, moderate... Uh, levels of hydrogen sulfide, or I guess they call it swamp gas, are headache, dizziness, nausea, and vomiting, coughing, and breathing difficulty. But the amount, of, but the amount that they're detecting is around a uh, thousand to two hundred, and uh, so that falls into the high uh, level, and it's severe respiratory tract irritation, eye irritation, acute uh, conjunctivitis, shock, convulsions, coma and death in severe cases. It says prolonged exposures at lower levels can lead to bronchitis, pneumonia, migraine headaches, pulmonary uh, edema, and loss of motor coordination. And uh, for the other uh, chemical that's being reported, it's uh, benzene. It says the major effects of benzene from long-term exposure is on the blood. And that's uh, that's something that is yet to be seen is how long this is going to actually take. How long are workers going to be down there in this area breathing this crap in? How long are the fishermen going to be breathing it in? And um, it could be a while. It could be a while. It. Uh, I think, this is my belief, but I think that it could be not until August that... An outside independent, not really outside independent, but because I think it's going to be uh, uh, a Halliburton uh, type subsidiary, uh, Boots and Coots uh, cleanup corporation. And um, I think it's going to be in August that they're finally going to come in and, and start uh, doing that cleanup stuff. But uh, yeah, for benzene, it says the major effects are uh, long term in the blood. It says that benzene causes harmful effects on bone marrow and can cause a decrease in red blood cells, leading to anema, anemia. Sorry, It can also cause excessive bleeding and can affect the immune system, increasing a chance for infection, which is just par for the course, right? Like, every, like causing people to be sterile and not being able to reproduce, you attack the immune system, much like the chemtrails that they're spraying us with. with